that they record is that if you are not able to paint along live, if you don't have your supplies or you're just watching to be inspired, you can always go back and watch this um, lesson on michaels.com on the community classroom page after the fact. It takes about 24 hours, but they have a great library of all our Let's Paint classes, all of their great Michaels community classes available for you to watch online on demand. So this is always going to be available for you. Again, it takes about 24 hours, but again, if you're just being inspired and um, if you're painting along, Jesse is going to teach you how to paint Lucky Clover in just about an hour. I love the blue and the green together. So a fun take on St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be doing a giveaway at the end of class. So one lucky winner will win um, some treasure gold in honor of St. Patrick's Day. So we will um, go ahead and pick a winner at the end. And again, if you have any questions, just let me know in the chat and I will relay them to Jesse. And um, Jesse, go ahead and get started. Awesome. Thanks, Kira. Yeah. So like Kira said, my name is Jesse. Um, I'm a content creator here at Plaid. And if you're new to our lessons, welcome. And if not, welcome back. We're so happy to have you. Um, so first, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know, just as a reminder, what supplies I'll be using for this class. Um, so here I have a 10 by 10 stretch canvas. So if you have a wood canvas or just something similar, a 12 by 12, really any size works for this painting. If you have a, a rectangular canvas, that's fine. You'll just have your background a little bigger and regardless, your clover will be in the middle. So don't stress about that. I've got my palette paper, um, which is just some wax coated paper. So this is great um, for mixing paint, um, but if you have a paper plate or a styrofoam plate, whatever you like to put your paint on at home, go ahead and grab that. Um, I've got my paper towels and my water basin for cleaning my brushes. Um, and then the brushes I have, um, I'll just let you know what size is. I've got a three fourths inch flat. So anything about this size, this is gonna be what we're gonna be using for base coating. Anything that looks similar to that is fine. And then I have my um, number 12 flat um, or a half inch flat, anything like that is good. And then just a small round brush. This is a number six round, um, but any sort of small liner brush just for some detail work. Um, those are the three brushes we'll be using for this painting. And then as always, we'll be using our um, beautiful folk art paints. So the colors you need tonight, um, I've got lime green here. So just this really bright green. Uh, pistachio, I think too, will be beautiful for this. I've also got the color clover, of course. We're painting our lucky clover. We have to have some clover in the painting. So this really nice medium green color. But again, anything that's similar to this is fine. And then we've also got navy blue. So any, you know, midnight or uh, ink spot, any of those dark blue colors will be great for this. And then our favorite paint, this is a, a crowd pleaser for sure. Everyone's favorite, we'll be using treasure gold tonight. So um, this is a really beautiful, if you've never used before, a beautiful metallic paint that we make um, that you can buy on michaels.com or in stores. Um, and it is just the shiniest metallic paint, um, the shiniest water-based metallic paint I have ever used. So it, it's not smelly, it's water-based, it's non-toxic, and it is just super duper um, metallic when it goes on. So we're gonna be using, I just have the regular, the um, classic gold color for this. This is the least amount of paint I think we've ever used in a paint. No, I, I was telling Dylan when I was pulling the paints, I was like, did I mess up a supply list? Did I really use only four <laughs> paints? But it, it is true. We're only using four paints for this painting. Um, okay, so any questions about the supplies, Kira? No, I think it's good. Everyone's, uh, we're making these as gifts. We've got families that um, have people that are Irish and celebrating. So yeah. I'm Irish too, so we're excited. All right, guys. So first I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab some of my navy blue. And I'm going to put a good amount of that onto my palette paper. Because so what we're going to do here is we're going to start base coating. Run it out a little bit here. We want a oh. decent amount because we're going to be covering the whole canvas in this navy blue. Oh, and that also for always forget to mention, I've also got a hair dryer here with me tonight, um, and that's just so we can dry the painting between steps. So if you don't have a hair dryer, that's fine. You know, you can, um, like Kira said, watch the replay later and just pause um, at your pace and let your painting dry or just stick your painting in front of a fan. Our full guard paints dry fairly quickly. So if you don't have the hair dryer, don't stress about that either. Yep. Okay. And two things real quick, I wanna say to everybody, um, we, somebody asked that they didn't see any more classes um, like in the future. We are gonna be doing classes with Michaels at least through July. So we will check with them tomorrow and make sure they get those up. But we will be here pretty much every Monday night and then kind of through the week. And we have some really fun new special things coming up, new product setting. So, um, Somebody from our team will be here through July, so you guys can't get rid of us yet. So nope, we're not going anywhere. Keep, keep staying tuned, and Jesse has I next week's painting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're not fired yet. Um, nope. Just want to let everybody know that. Awesome. Thanks, Kira. 
Okay, guys, so I have my um, navy blue on my palette and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my three fourths inch flat brush. So again, anything, any really big brush that you can use for base coating is what you can grab for this part. So I'm just gonna do a nice even coat of the navy blue um, on my canvas. So just, you just wanna, when people are base coating, I think people sometimes tend to put way too much paint down. Um, they just wanna glob the paint down and get like a really thick coat. But you know, the best thing to do is to put just enough to cover the canvas. If you have to go back and touch up in a, in a few places or add a second coat, that's okay. But you really don't wanna glob the paint down because what it's gonna do is A, it's gonna take forever to dry, um, but B, it's just not gonna dry as well. It's not gonna dry as smoothly and as evenly. So you just wanna have just enough paint on your canvas to cover it, no more, no less. And if you feel like it's a little bit dry where you are and your brush is dragging, just dip it in a tiny bit of water, just the tiniest bit. You don't wanna have tons of water because that's just gonna um, dilute your paint just enough to kind of keep your brush flowing across the canvas. You just want it to be gliding. And again, this is navy blue, but any blue will work for this. If you have a brighter blue, that's fine. Um, even black would be really pretty, like a really dramatic black background for this painting. Oh, I love black. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like Here's a black too. and white kind of girl. We always I tease am. her about it. <laughs> but I, I'm, I branched out. I've branched out to navy. You have branched out. That's I true. I like it with the green. Yeah, definitely. Um, so my great grandma was like her parents were from Ireland so super Irish her birthday was on St. Patrick's Day and um, oh, cool. we I don't know if everybody remembers this this is I sound like a like a person telling a story but um we used to like take her green carnations on her birthday oh um that's why I have them in the back here and then and we used to get her I don't know if they still make them but like the um shamrock shakes from McDonald's Oh yeah, definitely. So they're Forever. like green mint. So we used to get those for her birthday. That's so they're cute. Silly. But just like, I remember that when I was little. I love that. That's a great story. When we were little, um, my sisters, I have two sisters and they both have red hair and we lived in New Jersey in our town. There was a St. Patrick's Day parade. And so I don't know if like my grandfather was like in a club or something that helped organize it. But every year, the three of us led the parade. <laughs> so we had like kilts, which I'm pretty sure is Scottish. And we had kilts and little vests and our three redheads every year we were in the front of the parade. I bet. That's so cute. It was a lot of fun. Okay. So again, we're just finishing up our base coat, guys. Feel free to do the sides. Um, people always ask that. Should you paint the sides you're painting? And you can feel free to do that. I just always wait till later because I end up making a mess trying to move it and have all the sides be wet while I'm trying to dry it. Um, so I usually paint the top and then I go back and, and do the sides later. But if you feel like you want to paint the sides now, feel free. Okay, so let's get nice and smooth. And then I'm going to rinse my brush off and I'm going to go ahead and pull out my hair dryer and start drying. Um, so whenever I use my hair dryer for acrylic paints, I put it on the highest air setting and then I kind of switch between hot and cold. I'll start with warm and then when I feel like my paint is getting a little bit too hot. I'll switch over to the cold setting and I'll kind of go back and forth. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. There's all these, um, I don't know if you can hear me, Jesse comments about like in New Jersey doing St. Patrick's Day, like up north. But like, I think, I don't know if it's just like a like northern kind of. I don't know. I guess it's a big deal everywhere, but definitely I am was from Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania, so it was a huge deal there. I think there's a big Irish population in like the Northeast. Yeah. I think that's, that's true. Yep. So if you have any white showing through in your canvas, you can just add a little bit more of the blue to cover that up. Yeah, I have a little bit of white if you guys can see on the top edge there. Um, and so what you can do if you just want to kind of like keep going, you don't have to go back and redry it, you can cover that with clovers. So just keep kind of looking at ahead of what we're going to be doing. You can just cover up any white pot spots with clovers. So just a little trick to kind of keep things going. 
But if you have a lot of white showing, you will want to dry and then do another coat of navy and then dry again before you start painting the clovers. And I'm gonna dry just another minute to get it nice and dry. Uh, yep, Pittsburgh does it. Chicago's good. I just heard about Savannah. I didn't know it was such a big deal in um, for St. Patrick's Day. Oh yeah, the Green River, right? They dive yeah, the river. Yeah, I didn't there. know that. My mom told me that just recently. Oh yeah. <laughs> Um, would, I've heard of it. Uh, aqua shift be good for lime green? Sure, it could. It would just have a different look, but there's nothing wrong. Or you could paint like a base of a different shade of green and then put the aqua on top of it. It'll just be less traditional. Yeah, that's Okay, so my panning's dry enough. So we can go ahead and we can continue with our painting. All right, so as you guys can see here in the final painting, um, we've got this really fun sort of faded background of all these little clovers. And we've got our big four leaf clover in the middle that we found lucky for St. Patrick's Day. So to do this sort of faded background, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some mixing. So first we're gonna mix a really dark green that's kind of close to the navy and we're gonna do a few clovers of that and they're just gonna get brighter and brighter. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna look like the clovers are sort of taller and taller, like we're looking down on the ground. And then of course, this one is the one that's closest to us in our painting. So again, we're gonna start by mixing. Um, I'll show you in just a second. So I'm mixing some green with some navy and make it darker in the background and then get lighter and lighter as it's getting closer to us. So that said, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab some more navy, put a little bit more on my palette because I kind of running out here. Someone was asking if you didn't have pistachio. So I said like a citrus green, a lime green, or yeah. even if you had a Kelly green, you could mix a little yellow with it. Oh, totally. Absolutely. That's a great idea, Kira. Oh, yeah, add a little oh. bit of yellow. Just take this green, your medium green, and add yellow to that. Yeah, great, great idea. All right, so I've got some um, navy blue, and then I'm going to grab some of my clover. And I'm going to go ahead and get my number 12 flat brush. So it looks like this. Um, anything similar to this is fine. If you've got a half inch brush or a quarter inch brush, even that'll work. So I'm gonna start with just a little bit of paint. I'm gonna start with one part navy blue and one part clover and see what we get. And if you don't have navy, you could use a, any dark blue, you could mix it with black or you could do just black or a dark gray. Yeah, a little, a you little could even do a light color. You could just have a white background. Yeah, absolutely. You could do a light background. That'd be great. Pink would be pretty. Dark. Totally. Yeah, that'd be really pretty. Okay, so you can see here, guys, we have this nice dark, dark green color. So let me hold it up a little bit closer so you guys can see it. We have this nice dark green color here. So it's kind of looks like a nice in between um, of our clover color and our navy. And I want it to be a little bit darker. I want it to be a little bit closer to the navy. And then we're going to build up to this lighter color. So I'm going to grab a little bit more navy and mix. We're looking for just a little bit greener than our navy, just to kind of pop off the background, but not be too bright. From this really sort of pretty aqua color that we're getting here. And I'm good with that. So whenever I mix my brush, mix paint with my brush, I always wipe off the excess paint before I actually start painting on my canvas. The reason for that is that you have way too much paint in your bristles, and it's going to be much harder to control the paint that's going onto your canvas. You want to be able to control how much paint is in your brush at all times. And if you just mix it and you've got it all moppy in there and it's just completely saturated with paint, you're not gonna have good control. Okay, so my brush is nice and fresh and clean now. So I'm gonna pick up some of my dark green here that I mixed and I'll show you the shape we're gonna make. That might be a little bit hard to see as we're going on the canvas. So I'll show you here my palette. So we're gonna take a peek. I've got my flat brush here. I'm going to swirl my brush in a swirling motion that way to do a little circle. And I'm going to swirl my brush near it and do three little swirls. So you get a really loose little clover shape here. So I'll show you again. I'm going to swirl my brush. I'm just using the bristles. I'm letting my brush do the work. Swirl my brush again, just three little swirls, and then swirl my brush again. And it doesn't need to be perfect because if you think about it, if you're looking at a, a patch of clovers, they are not perfect. They're all different, they're all different shapes and sizes. What they have in common is they have all of those round leaves together. Um, so as long as you've got three round leaves on each of your clovers, don't worry if one's smaller, one's larger, 
If your leaves aren't all the exact same size, if they're not all perfectly spaced, that is okay. That's kind of makes it look a little bit better. You can see in the final painting here, they're a little bit random looking. So I'm just gonna continue. I'm gonna start with these um, all over, just sort of evenly spread out on my background, doing all these little loops. So loop, loop, and I'm gonna keep doing this. And I kind of used up all my paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that color again. And again, that was navy blue with clover. Okay, so you're mixing clover and navy. Yep, yeah, I'm just mixing more of that color. I kind of used it all up for my practice ones. And just a small flat brush. Yep, just a small flat brush. I've got, I think I said number 12, but a half inch flat um, or a quarter inch flat, anything like that will be great. And I'm just gonna start going all over with my clovers. You can see they're kind of small. Like Mickey Mouse, somebody said. Yeah, <laughs> it is kind of like Mickey Mouse, it is true. I'm just gonna do three little clovers. They're kind of like popcorn kernels almost. <laughs> and don't forget, if you had little areas of white showing, this is your chance to cover that up. If you didn't go back and add blue, which I don't blame you, I like to kind of, you know, do the simplest work smarter, not harder. Um, now's your chance to go back and, and patch up some of those white areas with clovers. And someone's saying you could even do gold clovers. Oh, so cute. I love that idea. So again, you just kind of want to have it randomly. I'm kind of randomly placing them because keep in mind, we're going to build it up with another lighter color after this one. And you can see I'm kind of doing them off the edge here. So I might do only two. So I'm just to kind of look there, just peeking out. Like it's a big patch of clovers and we're just kind of seeing a small square of it. Do as many of this color as few as you'd like. We're kind of gonna fill up the whole canvas um, once we have all of the other colors down as well. So just keeping that in mind. And you don't have to worry so much about the middle because keep in mind we're gonna have our big four leaf clover there kind of taking up most of the real estate there in the center, so. Don't spend too much time painting clovers in the middle. And you, uh, Jesse's using a 10 by 10 canvas, mm -hmm. so a square, but you, again, you could do this design on absolutely any size, smaller, larger. Absolutely, because you'll just put your clover in the middle. It could be a, a circular canvas. It really doesn't matter, an oval canvas, whatever you got laying around. Um, okay, so I feel like that's good. I'm happy with that number of um, clovers. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep doing this, but I'm going to add a little bit more of my clover color. I know it's a little bit confusing. The clover green color to mm. my mixture here to make it a little bit lighter. So I'm going to do a little bit of navy, and I'm going to do a little bit more clover green than I did last time because I want it to be I want it to be darker than just the clover itself, but I want it to be lighter than this last color that we mixed for like a nice layering effect. So I'm just mixing it right in the same spot, and I'm just adding more of my clover green. Okay, so I have this nice medium green color. That looks nice, so maybe a little bit more clover. And can you just show the twirling one more time, Jesse? Absolutely. Here, let me rinse my brush off and then just mix with it. I'd love to show you guys again. So I'm going to do, I'll hold it up for you guys to see a little better what I'm doing. So I'm going to pick up, I'm just going to pick up this green just to show you guys. So I've got a little bit of green on my brush and I'm just going to, I'm kind of holding my brush upright. It's kind of perpendicular with my uh, canvas or palette, whatever you're painting on. And I'm going to do a swirl, a swirl. I'm just using the bristles. I'm not really moving my brush. I'm just twisting it and I'm pressing down. I'm pressing down and twisting to get that swirl. And you just wanna have three swirls together to resemble a clover. So I'm pressing down and I'm twisting it. I'm pressing down and it's kind of fanning it out to make those little clover shapes. Again, really loose, but when you're looking at a patch of clovers, they are really loose. They're kind of all different. 
Okay. So now I'm gonna go ahead with this little bit lighter green that I mixed. It's a little bit lighter than the last green we mixed. And I'm gonna continue doing that. And you can kind of overlap them. You can have them sort of overlapping here and there. Um, but we're just gonna add a few of this color to start adding the layers of clovers to our field, our little clover patch. And for this type of painting, you really could just, you know, add as many different kinds of greens as you want. You could sit here all day just mixing different varieties of green. You know, you could do three different green colors. You could do five. You could do ten. You know, it's kind of up to you. Um, it just, you know, adds a little more detail. I think we're going to do three different green colors here today. Um, but, you know, if you want to paint this later on or just kind of use this technique um, in a future painting, maybe a, a field of flowers or something, you could really make it vary as much as you'd like. It just gives it a, a lot of variety. Again, I'm just using this little bit lighter green color to paint more clovers. And I'm kind of making some a little bigger, some a little smaller. They're all about the same size. But, you know, I'm just varying it a little bit here and there. And again, I'm doing some overlapping as well. You're definitely overlapping if you've ever looked at a little patch of clovers. They're just kind of all over each other. Kind of relaxing just doing all your little swirls though. Yeah, everyone's just painting along. Awesome. I'll do one more of this color and then we'll mix our third green color. Okay. So now um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep going with this. We're just gonna add one more um, uh, color of green to this before we just kind of go to our pure clover color. And all we're going to do is we're going to take the color we just used and mix even a little more clover green to it just to lighten it up a little bit more. So just one more shade lighter than what we've got here. <laughs> Someone said we need some Irish music in the background. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Some green beer. Yeah, <laughs> I remember Kira, like when I was little, a lot of my little friends, I guess, I guess there was a big Irish population where I lived, would take like Irish dancing, like you would take like ballet or, oh, yeah. or Irish dancing. And I remember being so jealous of that. <laughs> like, I just thought that was like the coolest thing. I was like, I don't want to do Irish dancing so bad. Yeah, it looked so fun. Definitely not coordinated that not enough to do that. <laughs> no, I'm not either, but maybe I would have been my parents not had the dancer. Class. <laughs> I could see you three girls doing that. <laughs> right? Honestly, though. Um, okay, so now we've got this little bit lighter green. It's not quite as light as the clover because we did add some navy. So it's just a little bit kind of in between what we had and the clover color. And we're gonna keep doing that. We're gonna keep layering up our little um, clover shapes here on our on our canvas. Just another layer of clovers. And don't forget to overlap a little bit. Let's look at a really full patch.
Let's do a couple more and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dry. And again, I'm kind of ignoring that. That's why there's a big patch there because don't forget, we're kind of going to put our pull over here. Maybe I'll do a little guy right here. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rinse my brush off, get all that paint out of there. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit it with the hair dryer again. Um, so we can start painting our big four leaf clover, our lucky clover in the center. It does look like green popcorn. <laughs> I know. I was thinking about the first time I was painting. I was like, this looks like popcorn. No, it's green, so it works. Okay, so now we are ready to paint our big lucky clover in the center. Um, so don't stress guys, if you're a little bit worried about painting um, this four leaf clover without a template, I have a really easy way of looking at it. So it, you know, it's kind of hard when you have to get a shape to be like perfectly symmetrical or perfectly even, um, but I have a really good way, like I said, um, of kind of looking at this so that it, it seemed a little more simple. It's a little easier to wrap your head around. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my number um, six round. If you feel more comfortable, you can grab um, a pencil or a piece of chalk just to sort of map out your clover. If that makes you a little more comfortable, feel free. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start using my pencil. And then I'm also going to grab some of my lighter green. So whether you've got lime green or pistachio, um, or maybe you took your medium green and added yellow or white, um, whatever color you're planning on using for your lighter green, go ahead and grab that. Put a little bit of that on my palette. And to kind of like, I would say this kind of sketching out with a paintbrush to sort of draw our clover, we're going to take our um, round brush, so just this tiny round brush, so you guys can see, and I'm going to dip it in some water, and we're going to water down our lightest green a little bit. We kind of want like an inky consistency for this part. And the reason we want to see watery is A, we want to flow really easily across our canvas while we're doing our sort of little sketch here. And B, if we make a mistake, it's really easy to wipe away quickly because it's really watery. So you can just take a damp cloth and wipe it right off your dry painting. Again, make sure your underpainting is dry or else you'll be smearing your painting all around. Um, but if your painting is dry, we have this nice watery, uh, inky sort of consistency paint here. If we make a mistake, just really easy to just wipe away. Okay, so you can see here, oh, you can't see here. I'm just adding some water to make it sort of an inky consistency, nice and thin for just, doing my little drawing that we're about to do. And the reason I'm using this light color is because of course our background is so dark. So it's gonna pop and be able to see where your lines are. If we had a light colored background, we'd be using a darker color for this part. So I've got really watery, my little round brush here. And we're gonna note, since I have a square canvas, we're gonna kind of note where each of our four corners are. So I'm gonna kind of note my four corners. And with my eyeball, I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm kind of going to see my, oops, I just smeared some clover there. I'm kind of going to um, just eyeball it and sort of try to decide where my center is. So I'm kind of looking here. I'm just going to guess it's about there. So my center is right there. I'm making a mess. So again, I'm just guessing. I didn't do any measuring. It doesn't matter if it's perfect. I'm just kind of guessing that that's where the center of my canvas is. So right there. So now 
I'm going to turn my canvas so it's diagonal. So I'm looking at a diamond now. And I'm going to draw a heart. So a small heart here. Just nice and simple. Doesn't need to be perfect. I don't know the last time you looked at a clover or a four leaf clover, but none of the leaves were perfect. It's always going to be a little bit off. That's just how nature is. I have my heart there and it's ending down at the bottom right here is the center that we found. So I have my heart. The bottom tip of the heart is the center that we guessed. We didn't measure it, that's okay. And I'm gonna turn it so it's diagonal the next way. And I'm gonna paint a heart here and I'm gonna try to make it about the same size as my first heart. And the bottom of this heart is going to be that center as well. And then I'm gonna turn it here and I'm gonna paint another heart. And again, please don't stress if it's not perfect. I know a lot of people when they're doing like big bold shapes like this, they feel like it just needs to be perfect and symmetrical and it just really doesn't. It's okay if it's a little bit off. And then I'm gonna do the last one. You guys can see where we're going with this and I'm gonna paint my fourth heart. And again, if you had it nice and watery, it's gonna be really easy to wipe away if you make any sort of mistake. Then I have this really cute clover shape, four leaf clover right in the center of my canvas. So you can kind of turn it, you can kind of now sort of mix it up. I'm sliding all over the place. Decide which side you like the best, which way looks best to you. So I think I like it like this. I think this is actually my original um, way. So now we have this really cute clover here. So I'm gonna give you guys just a second to do that. So I'll kind of talk it over just in case you guys are catching up or in case somebody still had their hair dryer out. I watered down some of my lime green paint and I had my round brush and I guessed where the center of my canvas was, just guessed. I made a dot there. I turned my canvas diagonally and I painted a heart with the dot being the bottom point of my heart. And then I turned it diagonal, diagonally again and painted another heart with the bottom point being the center of my canvas, turned it again and did a heart and then turned it again and did a heart. And what we got is this really cute four leaf clover. So everybody go ahead and, and just finish up your clover real quick before we start painting it. Yep, everybody loves that tip. Awesome, very cool. I'm glad it's helping you guys. I know everybody gets kind of stressed. Um, if you're not really a drawer or you don't, you know, practice that sort of um, a lot, people get really stressed out about having to sort of sketch out compositions and paintings. I know they see something, they're like, oh, I can't draw that, I could never take that class. But I think that everybody really can. It's just kind of a matter of breaking down the shapes. A four-leaf clover is just four hearts, that's all it is. So when you yeah, kind of get that. your mind wrapped around that, everything is made of simple shapes. You really can draw or paint anything. Okay, so now that we've got our um, sort of four leaf clover mapped out, I'm gonna hang on to my little number six round and I'm just gonna use the same color we're using just to paint a little stem. So I'm gonna go on the bottom right here and I want it to be, um, the only rule is I wanna see wider at the bottom and narrower at the top. So I'm just gonna, no, no tricks, nothing fancy, just gonna paint my little stem. And I wanna see wider at the bottom and narrower at the top. So just like that, I'm just gonna block it in. Okay. The next thing we're gonna do uh, is we're just gonna start filling in our clover. So um, we're gonna use our clover color. <clears throat> so I'm gonna add a little more clover to my palette. And I'm going to grab my um, number 12 flat. So this is just our sort of medium flat brush. If you have a half inch flat or a quarter inch flat, whatever you're using. And I'm gonna mix one part clover with one part of my lighter green. So whether it's lime green or pistachio, I just wanna brighten it up a little bit so it really pops off of that dark background. So I did, here, see here. I did um, mostly clover, which is a touch of my lighter green. So lime green or whatever lighter green you're using. So we get a nice light, bright, grassy green color. And I'm gonna use that to just paint inside my clover. Nothing fancy, we're just filling it in. So it's solid green. And I'm kind of using the edge of my brush to just follow the shape. I always like to just let the brush do as much work as you can. 
brushes were designed to move paint around on the canvas. So the more you practice, the more you understand the way that brushes move and how the bristles hold paint. And it'll get, be much simpler to do simple things like painting inside of lines and things like that. Sort of getting right up to the edge, it just takes practice. I'm kind of using the edge of the brush, to just glide around the edges here. Lime green and clover. Yep, that's what yep. you mixed. Yes, ma'am. So again, I'm just putting as much uh, paint as I need to fill in my shape, just like when we were base coating the background. No more, no less, just enough to get a nice even coat, full coverage. I don't want a lot of texture. I want it to be as smooth as possible. And then once you do that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna dry it. All right, oh, and I'm gonna fill in my stem too. I almost forgot. I'm just gonna use the same brush to just fill in my stem with the same green color. And then, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to just dry it off real quick before we move on to the details. Yeah, if you still have some of your blue showing through, you can let it dry and add a little bit more of the green. Yeah, I have a, a little touch here and there of my blue showing through, so I might do the same thing. So just like Kira said, you don't wanna just keep globbing paint on there because what you do is you end up wiping the paint off that you've already put down, if it's still wet. So you do wanna make sure you dry it and then go back, it'll be much easier to cover up. Okay. So like I said, I'm, I am just going to touch up a little bit. I have a little bit of, um, you know, whenever you paint a really light color on top of a really dark color, it, you may need to do two coats. Um, so I'm just going to go back and I'm just going to touch up a little bit here and there to make sure I don't have any of that navy blue showing through. So if you guys have some navy blue showing through, feel free to do the same. Everyone said you're doing a great job, Jesse. You're a very patient teacher. Oh, well, thanks, guys. It's very nice of you to say. Um, she is just going and touching up her green. So not a new color. She's just covering up some of the blue that was showing through. Yep, trying to make sure I get nice full coverage. 
it's always good. No, I'm the kind of person who I like to be like one coat and done. I definitely like prefer that. And that's why I like using folk art paints because it usually is one coat and done because they're so thick and they have such great coverage. Um, but you know, anytime you paint, there's always going to be a time where you need to add that second coat. So you just got to be patient um, and make sure to dry in between coats. Don't be impatient like me. Add the second coat if you need it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to dry this again real quick. Okay, so mine's pretty dry. So I'm gonna, ready to move on to the next step. Um, so all we have left are a few little detail steps here. So we are gonna add a little bit of, um, I've used this term very loosely, highlighting and shading to our clover. I really, you know, if you guys have painted with me before, I usually use that term very loosely. I just like to add some details, make it look a little bit dimensional. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my um, number six round brush. So just this little round guy that we're using to paint the outline of our clover. And um, I still have on my palette from before a little bit of that, um, you know, let's go ahead and mix it actually. I don't wanna, people probably don't have that on their palette. So I'm gonna grab my number 12 flat brush just for mixing, cause I like to mix with the flat brush just easier. And I'm gonna do one part clover and one part navy. So we're going back to that kind of first dark um, green color that we made. So one part navy, one part clover. So that really Someone asked dark. if you had a special hair dryer because it was sorry I interrupted you if it was no, so quiet, okay. but it's just the way that zoom works. It's really weird. It like yeah, it like mutes like white noise for some yeah. reason. But no, it's actually pretty loud. It's like one of those like I don't know where this one came from. It's like one of those like hotel hair dryers. <laughs> I'm not sure who this is. This isn't the one I normally have. I think that might we have might have got that last year after the show. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> You might have adopted that one. <laughs> um, all right, so we've got, like I said, we just remixed that dark color. So it was some navy and a little bit of the clover. And I'm just rinsing my brush off. And now what I'm gonna do with this color, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna pick up my number six round brush, just like I had before that I was getting ahead of myself. And I'm gonna um, paint this color on the edge of my clover, but on the bottom edge of all the shapes. So I can kind of show you what I mean by that. Um, so for the bottom here, of course, I'm going to paint a little stroke right here on the bottom edge. So just right here on the bottom edge. And we're kind of just like, like I said, loosely using the term, we're shadowing things just to make it look a little more dimensional. So it's not so flat looking. Um, and then kind of on the underside of each of my round edges here, I'm going to add some of this dark um, green color. So I'll show you here. I'm going to add a little bit here, just a little stroke on the bottom edge of each of these areas. And it's just gonna give it a little more dimension. It's not gonna be so flat looking and it's gonna kind of also um, kind of make it pop more off the background because it's gonna give it a nice border. So I'm gonna do a little bit here and you can see I kind of went a little bit deeper into that sort of heart shape to just make it look a little bit more dimensional. And same thing here, kind of the underside of each of these round shapes. And we're not really going to do any up here because there's really no underside to those two right there. But that's okay. We're going to add um, the brighter color anyway. And then I rinse my brush off. So you can see I just went right on the underside of each of these round shapes. All the areas that had an underside. Of course, the top two kind of don't. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab my lighter green. So again, lime green, pistachio, um, your, your mixture with yellow, whatever it is that you're using for your, your lighter green. And do the exact same thing but I'm going to do it on the tops. So I'm gonna do the top edges of all of my round shapes, all the round edges on this clover. So this is kind of a highlight. You can even add a little bit of highlight down here if you want, just to make it really pop, because I really like the way that this bright, fun green looks against this dark background. I think it's really fun.
I'm just kind of using the tip of my brush, nothing fancy. You could even do a little bit right here on the stem. And you can see it just really makes that um, four leaf clover pop off of the background. You can see it's a lot clearer. Um, it doesn't really blend in. The edges don't blend in with all the shapes in the background as much anymore. So I'll give you guys just a second to catch up, adding your sort of shadows and highlights. Yeah, it looks great. Thanks, Kira. And then the last step is our favorite step to use treasure gold. <laughs> I mean, I would put it all over that thing. I would go crazy. Just get a roller and just cover the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> Forget the shamrock. Kind of like this painting here. Just a full treasure gold canvas. Oh yeah, that thing's awesome. <laughs> treasure right, gold guys. and some pouring paint. Oh yeah, great combo. All right, so while everybody's finishing up, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about Treasure Gold because I love it so much. Um, so again, you can get this at Michael's in stores or on michaels.com. Um, and this, like I said in the beginning, um, if you're used to using metallic paints, it's kind of hard to get that super duper mirror shine with something that's water-based and non-toxic. You end up having to use solvent-based paints and they're smelly. And I first didn't like to use that kind of toxic stuff in my craft room. You know, it's kind of like a full day project from using more toxic craft supplies. Um, so I love, love, love it. This is, um, it's, it has no uh, odor whatsoever. It's non-toxic, it's water-based, um, and it is like a mirror shine. Like we've painted pieces of furniture here and you can see your reflection in it. It is so, so super shiny. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, and it comes in this beautiful classic gold, but there's silvers, there's other shades of gold, there's jewel tones in the line. Um, so if you haven't tried this yet, I have a feeling most of you people who have been returning to this class probably have tried it at this point because we love it and we've used it so much. Um, but if not, just the next time you're at Michael's or the next time we're shopping online, go ahead and grab yourself a bottle because you definitely won't be disappointed. And there's so many different colors also. So we've yeah. got the traditional, but like some really pretty jewel tones. Beautiful jewel tones, blues and purples and pinks and yep. like copper, rose gold. We just, it's, it's so pretty. We'd like to add it to every painting. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay. It's our new glitter. It is, it's the new glitter. Yes, yeah, true. We love glitter still, but we love us some treasure gold. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pour a little bit of treasure gold out on my palette. And you'll really be able to see like, even just before it dries, how super shiny it is. Okay, so what we're gonna do with our treasure gold is we're gonna use it to kind of like further highlight everything um, and to add a little more detail. So I'm going to grab um, my number six round brush. So just my tiny little round brush that we've been using. And I'm just gonna dip the, I kind of, you saw what I did there. It's fairly dry, but I kind of smushed the tip. I'm just a little fly. I smushed the tip of my brush into a sharp tip. So I wanna kind of have that nice sharp tip. I don't want it to be smushed. I want it to be nice and sharp there on the tip of my brush. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip the very tip into my treasure gold. And just like we did on our big shamrock where we took our light green and we highlighted the tops of each of our round areas, we're gonna do the same thing, but for some of our background shapes. So it's kind of just gonna tie the whole painting together and have treasure gold on our main clover and treasure gold in the background. It's gonna make it really pretty. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna pick one, I'll pick this big guy right here. And I'm just gonna kind of outline just the very top, just to kind of highlight it like we did on the larger one. So I'll show you what I did there. Can you guys see that? How I just kind of highlighted him right on the top to make him stand out a little bit more. So again, I'm kind of keeping that tip. I'm kind of twirling my paintbrush to hang on to that tip. I'm just gonna highlight by just going around the edge of the top of some of these shapes in the background. I'm just gonna do that on a few. You can do it on just a few. You can do it on all of them. It's totally up to you. Sort of highlighting a few of these background guys. And I'm just using the very tip of my brush.
And again, do as many or as few as you'd like. Kind of hard to stop once you kind of start. You just want to kind of <laughs> add gold to all of them. We can see it adds that really pretty, like subtle shimmer to the background. It just makes some of them kind of like really pop and stand out. I think it's just a really pretty little detail. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush off. And then what I'm gonna add to the background is just some little like dots here and there. So you can see here in our final painting, we have some of these little dots in here, here and there, just like little like sprinkles of gold, um, just another sweet little detail for this um, St. Patrick's Day painting. So to do those little dots, I'm gonna use the back of my brush. So instead of using the bristles, I'm gonna use the um, handle of my brush as sort of a stamp. And I'm gonna make clusters of three, just cause I don't know why I always like to do clusters of three. I like odd numbers. I'm gonna do little clusters of three and they kind of also um, sort of mimic the shamrock shape. So kind of just, they kind of work together. So just start in the blue areas between the shamrocks to add some more detail and a little more shine. I'm gonna do little clusters of three dots. So you guys see those, but I'm doing just the little clusters. And again, you can add as many or as few of these as you'd like. And it's kind of hard to stop yourself once you get started. All right. And then once you've done that, our last step is to add some treasure gold to our large shamrock. Um, so all we're gonna do here is we're just gonna follow where we highlighted it before. So we're gonna go right on top of our, um, our light green highlights and kind of just another layer of highlighting. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna go right on top of my light green here with a stroke of my treasure gold. And then another one here. And I'm gonna follow that all around my painting. Here we go. And that is it for our lucky clover painting. So don't forget to sign your painting when you're done. Um, you can even sign it in treasure gold, which would be really pretty. But we are all finished. Awesome. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah, no problem. Um, do you want to show next week's painting? I would love to. So everybody is not worried. We'll be back. <laughs> we will be back. Kirsten, Kirsten will be here. Yeah, Kirsten will be here. Um, we're getting ready for spring. So we are loving um, this really fun trend of impasto painting. So the, the really thick, chunky painting um, with a palette knife that Kirsten's done here. So this really fun impasto flower vase. Kirsten will be back here same time next week, 8 p.m. Eastern time on Monday. Um, so make sure to tune in to paint this with her. It's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, I'm gonna pick a winner. Hi, sounds good, drum roll. Sharon Zeminski. Sharon. I can't see everybody, too many people. Sharon, I hope you're still on here. Congrats, Sharon. Okay, so Sharon, go to, oh, I've got 10 new messages here. Sharon, go to Plaid Crafts Facebook page, go to our direct message, private message us, and let them know that you want on a Michaels class and they will get you out some treasure gold. Woohoo! So thank you guys so much. Um, can you show it one more time, please? Oh. Yeah, hold them both up. <laughs> <Ta -da. laughs> thanks guys we'll see you we'll um we'll be back this week we have some trend classes mm -hmm. the team will be back and then again we'll have paint night next monday so thank you guys so much have a great rest of the week thanks michael bye, bye, bye everybody <laughs> <laughs> bye.